Greetings and welcome to the Bridges of Meeting Hub channel. I'm Chad the Alcoholic and uh, well, this is our uh, ninth attempt, attempt at the second season of the so-called news. Uh, we're shooting on location from my backyard here because we recently had a flood in the basement. Here we go. I can see it coming. You see that? Here it is. Wonderful, but uh, it's a gorgeous day, Memorial Day. Might as well, uh, might as well uh, just do what we do. So, uh, don't mind the lawnmowers, uh, don't mind the birds and the wind and the dogs and the whatever. Doesn't matter. I'm also kind of shooting from the hip. I have some show notes here, but who cares? It's been a while. It's been about two months since our last episode, and I'd like to uh, to give us something and uh, can do my part, as they say. So, uh, recently, Paul threw me a bone. You have this sense of um, this world, but not this world. And so here, in terms of the cinema, you have a archetypal small town in the South. I, I noted when the, when the show first came on, I said to my wife, it almost looks like the town out of Gilmore Girls, which, of course, Gilmore Girls is very much a story about, we're going to talk about that in a minute, much more story about saints. Also, recently, Paul had a uh, conversation with a gentleman whose name is slipping my mind at the moment. Uh, but at, in that conversation, uh, Paul had done a pretty great explanation on estuary, and I wanted to share that with you. I suppose. You know what? Before you go, I've heard you mention and discuss occasionally the estuary, but I, I never looked it up. So tell me about that. What is that? I have for almost 25 years been the minister of a little church on a seedy little corner in not the most important city in America, um, sharing my life and giving my life to a lot of older people who never watch any of my videos, <laughs> would have very little idea of a lot of what we spoke about in this conversation. Um, never think about Plato or Socrates or any of these things. And at the same time, have always wanted to have conversations like these when when jordan peterson came around i made my first video suddenly my buddy rick stops in church the first sunday after i make my video gives me this poster and says i've never been to church before in my life but here i am and for the next couple of years after church says oh what'd you think of this rick he says i have no idea what's going on with you people <laughs> It's, just, it's inconceivable what's going on here. But after, you know, after a month or so of making videos, Rick is, and some of my friends said, well, let's, why don't you do a meetup? And so, so I, Jordan Peterson meetup. I thought, nobody's going to come to this. Dozen people come. And we, what am I going to do with these people? I don't know. We're just going to sit down and talk. So we talk for about two hours. And then we keep talking. In fact, we talk so long that it's 1.30 in the morning and the church phone rings. And I thought, I know who that is. That's my wife. Who are these people you're with? <laughs> so at that point, it was like, okay, I need to have an end time. So then we would do it the next month and we just have a conversation. We do it the next month. One of the things that I realized in how many years of church work is that very few people would imagine, you know, just like that woman who knocked on the door here, I need some gas money or I need some food or I need $20 because I really need some beer or, you know, whatever they knock on my door for. Um, nobody would ever knock on the door and thinking, I'd really like to have a good conversation with someone about what's yes. important. Yeah. Yeah. And so I also noticed in running a lot of Bible studies in church that just like you mentioned before, in terms of you're a little kid and you have a question and you got these, you know, one baby goes to heaven and one baby goes to limbo and say, well, 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 what about that? And, you know, don't ask questions like that in church. We have orthodoxy to maintain. Oh, okay. Well, I certainly don't want to mess up your orthodoxy. I, I didn't mean to do anything wrong. 
But I, I noticed that even in wonderful, well-meaning Bible studies, that people would not say what they really thought. And they'd certainly not tell their pastor because they'd lose, lose status in the community. Well, maybe they're no longer believing like the rest of us are supposed to. But the more I would talk to people privately, I realized that there's whole ranges of beliefs that people have and don't have that they won't fess up to. Not to mention the other stuff going on in their lives that they know they shouldn't be doing that is really going on. And on one hand, in a community like that, you sort of need those kinds of tensions and boundaries and expectations. I get all that. But without a space in which to process and explore, um, people just sort of hold their breath for as long as they can and then get out the door and huh, now I can go do whatever I think I should do, whether it means I don't believe in Jesus or I, I want to you know, leave my wife or I, I, I want to go say Socrates is great and Jesus is meh. I mean, you can't say that in church. So I got the idea of having a space outside of church, but it's often inside the building of church because that's the space I got where people can talk and they can say what they think and we can listen to each other. And we have this little protocol that tries to help keep the small group dynamics good so nobody hogs the conversation and you don't wind up spending two hours talking about what nobody else in the group wants to listen to or any of that kind of stuff. So we have a few little rules about that, but basically the purpose of it is let's have a space where people can talk and tell their truth and form a community together somewhat. And, and I think actually it doesn't have to be in a church or connected to a church, but in my opinion, churches need this. Because right now, by virtue of everything that's gone in the culture and also the internet and everything, there's a lot of people who are just sort of wandering out of church. And as a pastor, the pastor is often the last to know. And for as a pastor, it's kind of like, I wish, I wish, I wish you'd come and talk to me because I'm not necessarily hurt that you're leaving the church. I'm more hurt that you didn't feel you had anyone that you could talk to about these things. And, and, you know, I wind up being the pastor for lots of people who will never go to church just happens that way in a neighborhood. And that's, you know, I'm, I'm fine with that. Even if I'd love for them to come to church, I will love them and listen to them and I will be their pastor and I'll be their friend, even if they never come to church. It's totally cool. I get that. But what estuary is supposed to do is to say, here's a space. Nobody's going to try to evangelize you. Nobody's going to ask you for money. Nobody's going to lean on you and try and make you believe something that you don't believe. But why don't you tell us what you really think and be willing to listen to what other people really think? You know, in some ways, it's exactly what we've done just in this little conversation, but with maybe a group of four, six or eight people. And then you do it with some regularity because, you know, after we know each other's stories a little bit, now the next time we come to the conversation, we don't start from zero. You've got some friendship, you've got some mutual understanding, there's trust growing. And it's a reciprocal opening, as John might call it. Exactly. Well, that's awesome. So you've been doing that for a long time? No, we've been, so the group here said, this is great, we ought to share it with people. And so we've been sort of trying to help other groups start there's a, there's a friend of mine who was very much on the ground floor of this. He sort of runs a training thing that has about 50 people. And the training thing is just doing it. You know, it's not unlike yoga and that's, it's just doing it together with some repetition, but then their job is to, you know, start their own groups. And, um, and so we've, we've got, we've got that going. So it's kind of like a movement, like a pyramid it's spreading out. Yeah. Uh, that's good. Do you, so you do it physically, not online? We, the goal is for people to do it physically. Sometimes, especially during COVID, some groups moved online. Um, we're we're going to continue. We're still exploring the online physical thing. The priority, though, should be the physical. Because when things happen in the physical space, they're much richer, more enduring. They're more real. And then people are living in the same community too. Yeah. With yeah. yeah. Anonymity online, you know, people yeah. from everywhere. 
and, and so problem. you know my group has a lot of atheists um ironically enough and but yeah, we, we can help each other when there's someone has a crisis. They've got a pastor if they want one, you know. That's great. What a great idea. Speaking of estuary and uh, this little corner of the internet, uh, Jacob Federici, 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 I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't remember. Anyhow, Jacob recently started a show on Spotify called Post Platonic, and I am your host, Jacob Federici. This is Post Platonic, and I am your host, Jacob Federici. Welcome to a little experiment that I decided to do. Uh, the, the people who recognize Post Platonic will uh, be familiar with this little corner of the internet. If you are not familiar with this little corner of the internet and would like to find out a bit more about it, uh, you are certainly welcome to go to this-little-corner.com where you will find a search engine of thousands of um, videos. And these are not short videos. <laughs> these videos tend to be at least an hour long. Uh, which discuss all of the things that we are discussing in this little corner of the internet. Um, so, again, this dash little dash corner dot com has a search engine, and you can wade in to any of the many channels. And frankly, that's just the YouTube. <laughs> videos that are uh, relevant. There's obviously a lot more. Well, not obviously, but there is surprisingly actually a lot more to this little corner of the internet than just YouTube videos. Um, and I decided we need to do, to do something new. And so instead of just thinking about post-Platonism or talking about post-Platonism, which is what we do a lot of, or even acting in a post-Platonic manner, I decided I need to be post-Platonic. And so... Uh, here you are. So uh, I will be doing a, a, a guest spot on that as guest host, I suppose. And that so that should be coming out pretty soon. That's, that's uh, should be pretty terrible. Um, but other than that, uh, Jacob's actually doing a lot, a lot of cool stuff with that show. Uh, and any, any one of you, I imagine, if you'd like to contribute, go hit him up. That'd be cool. Um, speaking of this little corner of the internet. Uh, Griswold Grimm, the famous uh, Griswold Grimm, recently, uh, today in fact, dropped a conversation with Karen Wong. The one that I got sucked into was the spaceship one where I was flying around as a fighter pilot and they had no, no crafted story. So it was only us making the storyline and that, and that I was meeting people from Europe and, and whatnot was exciting to me at the time so that helped hold mm -hmm. me in as well and so that that feels like real relationships with people i suppose absolutely there's a there's an anecdote i have from the space game days where one of my wingmen in my squad who i flew in in combat with all the time uh had a, an appendix problem and he like in the hospital he's calling like screaming to to people in the real world about his wing, his wingmen in some space universe that nobody understood, mm -hmm. in the delirium of the fever from the appendicitis or whatever. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Yeah, because that world becomes very real to you. It's the bonds and the experiences are, are still sharing experience with other human beings. Mm -hmm. 
So that part's just as real. But the experience is a simulation falls away. Mm -hmm. And like there was points where it was more important to me what I was doing in that universe than surviving in this one. And I think that was like 20 years ago. Now it's getting like humans get better at whatever they do. And now we're getting better at fake synthetic experiences that are more stimulating or engaging than people misattuned to the reality. Do you ever get a little bit worried about, uh, about this little corner of the internet that we're doing the same thing? <laughs> this is a video game. I know, you know what I mean, because we get to know each other. We're developing these virtual relationships. We talk to each other on Twitter. We talk to each other through these videos. We get these high level intellectual conversations going that are very stimulating. And then we drop back into the real world and nobody knows what we're talking about or how to interact with us. And our family members kind of look at us like, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> you know? I think we're pioneers. Um, like for me, the visualization is a, a channel on YouTube, et cetera, is a ship. And like the Discord community that builds around one is sort of like the inside of the ship and but everyone is sending their attention to these fake places but when the attention combines it's it becomes a real experience a real shared experience and that's mm -hmm. i like to think that favorably for our situation is that what we're doing is it's like the top down and the bottom up are colliding. It's like 50, 60 years ago, like none of the knowledge of the world or like through a newspaper was the only way the knowledge of the greater reality would seep into a local community. And now it's the integration is happening and it's having really chaotic effects on the population. So in some way, our shared attention looking towards a higher goal is um, we've, we've got our ship headed in the right direction. Well, we, we could be watching music videos or just pleasuring ourselves. But instead, we're, we're thinking together towards something. Mm -hmm. And for me, I like to think there's this, like if I crawl down my memory tree, there's this Joseph Campbell clip that sticks with me. It's how like a tribe would take their young men into, like they'd always have the men of the tribe wear these God masks. And they'd make them all big and scary. And when the child was old enough, they'd take him in the cave and make him fight him and let him win and then stick the mask on his face. Well, this poor kid has to stand up and fight a man with a mask. I'd say he's fighting the God. The man lets the kid win, takes the mask off, puts it on the kid. Now the mask is not there defeated and simply said, oh, this is just myth. He said the mask represents the power that is shaping the society and has shaped you. And now you are a representative of that power. That's a big story. And that's an initiation. I think our culture and the West has lost except for, you know, like the Masons. And I think one of the things we're piecing together as we're building in the way we're building or thinking the way we're thinking in this community is like a mask we can hand the generation that's buried in the digital world from age three or so now, or eight at the minimum. So what we, if we can cobble it together and present it to them, once we got what we think is worth presenting, I think we can actually make a good help, make a good difference that, for example, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be affecting in the world if I was loading dog food on a truck with my time. 
Although if I was loading dog food on a truck, I could listen and think along that way. But Well, that's one of the interesting things, right? <clears throat> Is that the people that are doing more hands-on kind of work have found that the, the YouTube educational videos and conversational videos are a way for them to utilize their minds during their during their working time. So it's a greatly expanded the class of people who are thinking about the problem. I'm always reading comments from some guy who says, I'm a truck driver and I listen to Jordan Peterson 10 hours a day or, you know, or. Speaking of Karen Wong, uh, she had a conversation with this gentleman, Wolfgang Smith, in which Luke uh, did a nice little rip. It's an area where a, I mean, the easiest way to think about it is like an electromagnetic field is there is a field that the magnet acts, ha, you know, has an act, uh, has an action, has an actionable area. And, and I think it, it's a way out of our um, rationalistic, objective, objectivist way of conceiving of the world. It's even a way out of thinking of knowledge as information because I would argue in, in, to think of information as to, to think of knowledge as information is to objectify knowledge and it's it's to think of um, knowledge as a fact is an object it's a, it's a static object right it's just a, it's absolute like this is just a fact right there's no there's no more dynamism to it because what you have with this with this image which is the image he says it's the image of the cosmos, but I would also say it's it's kind of a icon of everything, because what you have is you have this center point, which to to use theology or to talk about it in terms of God, which to me is the thing behind the thing behind the thing. It's as deep as you can get, and then this connects to language and vision stuff that I'm very passionate about. You have God in the center, which is this point, which is the same as I mean, you could, from like a philosophical materialist perspective, you could say this is the singularity, the point from which everything emerges, the the vac the nothingness, which is somethingness, infinity, infinite potential and potency, uh, but is immutable, unchangeable, uh, but yet with, but yet in and of itself is also nothing, because if all you have is this, you have nothing. In infinity is the same as nothing. It's beyond duality. But then when that becomes something, so to think about it, the easiest way to think about it will be along philosophical materialistic perspectives because that's the general paradigm uh, of the world and the way that we think of things because we're objectivists, is like when this nothingness becomes so somethingness, why is there something rather than nothing? Because of this. Because if there was just nothing, it would just be infinite potential and potency, but there is something. And so you have a dynamism between the immutable source the, you know, the unmoved mover moved, boom, uh, and, and became this, you know, became something rather than nothing. Um, so, and, th and that is communicated, the unction of, of the something, the form, the word, the manifestation of the, of the infinite potential is mediated or spirated, you could say, or, uh, the communion between those two is the breath, um, and and that is a that's a fractal reality. So here's what Wolfgang Smith and Karen Wong talked about. Then the the margin, the the perimeter of the circle, and one of my questions is: Could we look at this from a three D perspective and see the center as being the pinnacle? Uh, well, I I classify it as an icon, and an icon, of course, is a way of presenting uh, metaphysical truth in a very simple, uh, abbreviated visual form. So uh, I think we should keep it two-dimensional and uh, try to understand the ontology which it expresses. Now I think, Karen, you could actually get a 3D icon out of a two-dimensional image and 
This is my contribution. Speaking of fractal, uh, Jordan Peterson recently said this. He's still part of an unbroken tradition. He said they had a myth that something alien landed on the earth. It was this sea suit object. And that when it was rolling down the mountain that it landed on, it took the form of all the things that it encountered. And so, well, like I said, this is in the realm of wild speculation. But I know what Crick thought about the, the origin of DNA. Well, he thought he thought it was too complex to have evolved. He oh, oh I see what you mean. You mean the idea of it coming from from elsewhere? Yeah. No, I mean I know that's an infinite regress okay, then, problem. But, okay, that, that's what was. Okay, so that was <coughs> all that was behind that. that you know bit of speculation, but which I normally would do never do. These coiling serpents, I keep. I think that under that. some conditions, people can vision can expand to the point where they can see down into the micro level. They can apprehend the micro level consciously. You think that... What? What the fuck? Our consciousness can extend down to the micro level, yeah. to the level of... I do. Micro, the micro, micro, micro level of, yeah. of, 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 of DNA. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, well, since we're on this topic, I have taken extremely high doses of psilocybin. Like four doses is enough basically to knock you out of your body. I, I wouldn't recommend it casually. I took seven grams three times. And I had this shamanic experience. It was unbelievable, and I don't even know how, I have no idea how to make sense out of well, it. Well, I believe that. I, I can quite understand you have a most extraordinary experience. I've, I've never taken such a drug, but I could imagine you have the most remarkable experience. But you've just said that you think that your consciousness can see into your cells and see this, this structure of DNA. That has got to be utter nonsense. I'm sorry. Well, it, it, like I said, I, I'm perfectly reasonable, willing to admit forthrightly that that is a highly speculative idea. Well, it is speculative, but it's also got to be false. It Why? Why? No, no. Yeah. And fair, look, in all probability, you're right. Right? I mean, we're both wise enough to use Occam's razor. I know, right? Uh, stay away from drugs, kids. Um, uh, in a new segment, I'd like to drop the meme of the week. And, well, all that said, there's a ton going on uh, and coming up. Uh, I just want to send us off with a little bit of uh, Paul sharing what will be going on in the next few months. And uh, this isn't the most um, hilarious show that I made. It doesn't matter. I wanted to contribute something. I don't have a lot of time, so... Eh. It is what it is. It's a little, little bit of a balance, you know? A little bit of a balance. Balance, and I'm sure my neighbors here probably think I'm some sort of whack job in which they would actually be correct. So, also, uh, I want to give a shout out to Chris Bagu and the little one Isaac and Sarah. So, congratulations, you guys. Pretty great. And uh, with, with that, I quit. <clears throat> Good morning. Uh, I'll start out with some announcements. We've actually got a lot going on right now behind the scenes. So we have, so coming up in June, I am flying to Chicago June 6th, and I will be in Chicago June, uh, the evening of June 6th, and then June 7th and June 8th. I'm leaving for Grand Rapids June 9th to do the CRC Synod. But in the meantime, we'll be having a little having a bunch of get-togethers and shindigs and and fun over in Chicagoland. And uh, I don't have a link to, I don't know, Sam, have you done a website yet for that? Uh, that I don't have a yet? website. I could I could give you some meetup.com events that people could uh, RSVP on um, uh, for the events that weekend. Okay. That's not weekend, idea. during the week. Yeah, not, yeah. Okay. 
So why don't why don't you just give a little little quick summary of of at least some of what's planned? Um, sure. So Paul's coming, and we also have um, the commentator formerly known as Esther O'Reilly um, coming to uh, Bethel McGrew. And we have kind of two days of main events planned. Um, Tuesday, that's Tuesday, June 7th. Let me make sure I'm getting that date right. Yeah, Tuesday, June 7th, we're going to have two live podcast recordings during the day. Um, one will be on Parker's Pansies, the Parker Sedicases podcast, and he's going to be interviewing Bethel and Paul. And then one, I think, will probably just be Paul's podcast. Uh, and so the that'll be an opportunity for some live uh, audience question and answer. And then we'll also have lunch together and some sort of time to um, discuss the podcast in small groups, sort of like meetup style. And then Wednesday evening, Wednesday, June 8th, um, at uh, Elmhurst Christian Reformed Church, uh, there's going to be a live moderated talk between Paul and Bethel at 7 p.m. Central Time. And um, that will be hosted by the Chicago Meetup Group, and there will be time for live audience question and answer for that. Um, the events are free, although we're asking for suggested donations. So if you're in the Chicagoland area, um, that would be great. If you are coming in from out of town, um, you could email me at transfiguredchannel at gmail.com um, if you wanted some more details. But generally, the events will be happening in Wheaton and Elmhurst. Those are both two western suburbs that are relatively close to each other. So if you're coming in from out of town, I'd recommend staying over in that neck of the woods. And uh, Wednesday during the day before that live talk, we'll do some fun Chicago area stuff. Um, and there will also probably be a brunch Thursday morning. So we have uh, events on, on those three days. Um, so hopefully, if you're in Chicago or you want to come in from out of town, um, we're, we're happy to have you. All right. So that's all the Chicago fun. So then I go to Grand Rapids and I, there's the Christian Reform Synod that I'll be participating in. That will be from the 9th to the 16th of June. And then on the morning of the 17th, uh, John Vendank and I are hosting a breakfast at the Prince Center at Calvin University. And that one, the focus of that will primarily be for church leaders. You don't have to be a pastor or even necessarily a church leader, but that will be the focus of it. And we'll be talking about basically making space for estuary in church, what estuary is, its value. And um, that's that event is also free, although John and I, I think we'll pass the hat because we're on the hook for a few hundred dollars to rent the room. John um, lined up a donor to pay for breakfast. So um, if you have no money, you can certainly come. Um, but if you if you can donate 10 or 20 bucks to the cause, that will uh, mean that John and I have to subsidize it less. So um, that that's the morning of of June 17, probably eight to whenever you want to leave. Um, there'll be I'll be uh, getting together with the Grand Rapids meetup estuary. And I don't exactly remember which evening that is, but um, yeah, I'll be in Grand Rapids until that next Tuesday. Then I return home to Sacramento. Uh, come August, or come August, I am flying to uh, Europe for the first time in my life. I'm really looking forward to that. John Vendank and I are traveling together. Um, it's going to be like um, Laurel and Hardy or... Um, 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 Abbott and, and and Costello, Lou Costello. I guess I'm the short fat one. It's, it's, uh, so you can see me and Vendonk stand together and decide who's the short fat one, who's the tall skinny one. But so we are going to be flying to Europe and we are going to first stop is in the Netherlands. And I think there are some things being planned there. I've never been to the Netherlands, so I'm really excited about that. Then we are going to Germany to participate in the festival that Matthias is scheduling. There's a website out there for that. Um, I don't know, Rick, you can maybe drop some of these links in the, um, in the show notes when you get a, when you get a chance, or at least in the comments. And so then after, after Germany, I think we might swing through, 
uh, Switzerland. I'd like to visit Geneva and Labrie. And from there, I think we're going to, uh, Vendank was first looking at air travel. I said, oh, let's, let's ride the train so we can see some things. And I think then we're going to go from Geneva to Paris and then from Paris to London. And then we'll be spending the rest of the trip in the British Isles. My schedule for that segment of the trip is, is by no means set. There's some people I want to see, but there'll be time for, we'll, we'll probably have about a week in, um, in the UK and in the British Isles. So, um, so we'll over between now and then we'll be trying to set up um, estuary groups or meetups or get togethers or whatever, whatever we can. So that will be, um, that will be the end of August and the beginning of September. And then come the middle of September, there's the conference Consciousness and Conscience. This conference was originally planned in Thunder Bay for September 2020, but you all know what happened in March 2020, which made September 2020 not happen. But now here in September 2022, um, we will be traveling up to Thunder Bay and there'll be four of us. Uh, this will be the first time I get to meet uh, Jonathan Peugeot and John Verveke in person, unless I have to actually probably fly through Toronto. I might spend an overnight in Toronto on my way to the conference, and so who knows, maybe I'll get together with them before, but that'll be really our first, um, that'll be a big deal. And it begins with Airsoft, which is almost paintball for Jesus. Uh, they've got the schedule here. Let's see, where's the schedule? Sessions. So on the 16th, you've got pre-conference airsoft and barbecue, and then you've got a community lunch, and then John Verveke kicks it off with the first talk, and then I um, have the second talk, and then John and I talk together. And Catherine at the Discord server is the one who's really pulling this whole thing together. So if you have detailed questions, you can ask Catherine if you're on the Bridges of Meaning Discord server. And so then we, you know, we'll be talking with each other and we'll talking with all those who gather. Um, September 17, um, in the morning, um, doc, Dr. Richard um, Mondrell is from Thunder Bay. He's a professor there at a university. And so he'll be giving a lecture on the subject. And then Jonathan Peugeot will be giving a lecture on the subject. And then those two will, will talk together. And then there'll be a panel discussion. And then there'll be a round table of sorts, and then there's a dinner break. And then uh, Jonathan and I will talk for about an hour, and Richard and John will talk for an hour, and then some concluding comments. That would be September 17, a Saturday, and then September 18, which is a Sunday. Urban Abbey is a uh, worshiping congregation, so I will be preaching at their service in the morning. And then Jonathan Peugeot in the afternoon is giving an introduction to iconography um, as, as a talk. And John Verveke will be uh, doing something with respect to guided meditation. And that's the end of the event. And so the um, events.eventzilla.net slash e slash consciousness, conscience, and then a bunch of numbers. Um, we'll make sure that we propagate these links on the channel. I usually, after the live stream, after Rick and I finish up whatever we have to finish up, then I usually go up and make a new thumbnail and clean it up and post it onto the um, the audio um, the audio channel for my podcast. And I'll I'll take these links and I'll put them in so so y'all can sign up. So there are three clusters of live events that I will be participating in. Chicago Grand Rapids in June, August in Netherlands and Germany, September in the UK, but none of that is organized yet. And so I'm currently working on getting those things organized. Um, doing that in conjunction with John Van Donk. John's been a super help to me. He arranged the air, he arranged the air travel. He's um he's he's sort of my tour guide and uh yeah, John's been tremendously helpful in organizing that. But the UK segment is, at this point, completely unorganized, but there will be time for some meetings and podcasts and whatever whatever y'all want to do in the UK. And then um, in the middle of September, then, this event that a number of us have been waiting two years for, which will be this big deal in Thunder Bay. And I think 
I think that's going to be, I think all of it's going to be tremendous, but I'm, I'm looking forward to all of it, but yep. So there's early bird registration that you can sign up. If you get your tickets early, you get something of a discount on them. I, you know, Catherine was a little nervous, you know, is, you know, am I going to, am I going to lose my shirt on this conference? And I said, no, Catherine, I think this thing is going to fill up and I think it's going to fill up fast. A lot of people have been asking about live streams and stuff. Decisions haven't been made about those kinds of questions yet. They're first just trying to put put this whole thing together. Um, so, yep, that's what's coming up.